Many of you have been asking for an advanced higher order visualizer for ambisonic signals. Well, we're just releasing ours and I am extremely proud to present it to you. My name is Alejandro and we are the Audio Brewers. Our higher order visualizer was created not only to show you a graphic representation in the sound field, but also its spatial correlation, the distribution of the energy and the loudness on each dimensional pole. I'm super excited to show it to you and I'm just gonna go to the door and have a couple of examples running the visualizer and showing you how it could be useful in real life situations. So let's start with a monophonic uh, source. Um, I have created here a mono audio file, which is going to my bed. So if I play it. You can see that it's just a monophonic audio, nothing special is coming through our center channel. And I am going to run it through the visualizer. But to do that, I first have to convert it to ambisonics, and then I have to decode it from ambisonics to my bed. So the first thing I'm going to do is to insert an ambisonic encoder. So I'm going to insert our AB encoder to seventh order ambisonics to get the best quality. And now my track is being encoded from mono to seventh order ambisonic. And next, I'm going to decode this track. So to decode this track, I could add a decoder in this very track to convert it from seventh order ambisonics to whatever I want. But in my case, I'm going to create a seventh order ambisonics auxiliary track because I want to send all my ambisonics tracks to this auxiliary track and I want to decode only once. It's going to be easier like that. So I'm going to add an auxiliary track. It's going to be a seventh order ambisonics auxiliary track. And then I'm going to route my encoded signal to this track. Finally, I'm going to add a decoder to this ambisonics track, and I'm going to add it on the very last insert. And I'm going to set it to decode to 712, which is the width of my bed. And finally, I'm going to set its output to go to my bed. So now my mono signal is being encoded to 7th order ambisonics. This ambisonic signal is being sent to a 7th order ambisonics auxiliary track. And then this auxiliary track is being decoded to 712, which is going to my bed. So if I press play, it should again sound in the front center. And you can see that the basic visualizer of my decoder already shows that the signal is in the front center. And if I were to move this signal um, around my sound field. You can see that uh, the basic visualizer of the decoder is already showing how it moves around. So next thing I'm going to do is to add our higher order visualizer. I'm going to add it before the signal is being decoded because I want the signal to be in ambisonics. So I'm going to add it somewhere here and I'm going to add the seventh order ambisonics version of it so that it doesn't touch the signal at all. And you must know that the cool thing about this visualizer is that it's going to automatically detect the order that is coming in. So it doesn't matter if you put in a seventh order ambisonics track, it can receive a first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh order ambisonics signal, and it's going to adapt the visualization to the order. So if I were to press play here, I'm going to be able to see that the signal is going to the front center. And in the correlation, I'm going to see that the signal is going completely to the front because right now I only have a monophonic signal on the front. So if I press play. You can see that you have four elements in my visualizer. You have the visualizer, which is going to show you the graphic representation of the sound in the sound field. Then you have the energy visualizer, which is going to show you how the energy is distributed in your sound field in each of the dimensional um, planes. And then you have the correlation, which is going to show you where the acoustic weight is being distributed. So if you have a predominancy on the front center, which is this case, the correlation is just going to go to the front. And finally, you have the loudness visualizer, which is going to show you not only the loudness of each dimensional pole, but also a peak and an RMS value. So if I press play again, you will see how you have the loudness. You have the peak, which is going to be kept for a couple of seconds. And then on blue on the sides, you have the RMS loudness. 
Finally, you have a flip button here, which is going to help you flip the head in case you want to see the opposite side of this dimensional plane. So if I press plus again, And that's how you can visualize the sound. Now, what happens if I move this monophonic signal around my sound field? Well, let's try it out. You can see that the visualizer is reinterpreting the signal and is just showing you a visual representation of how the signal is behaving in your three-dimensional field. Now, Finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send to this visualizer a lower order ambisonics. Right now I'm sending a seventh order ambisonics um, signal, and you can see that the energy is very, very well distributed in the center, in the front center. Um, let's check it out again. Now I'm going to encode this monophonic signal to a first order ambisonic signal. You will see that the energy distribution is going to be less concentrated in the center because it's going to be a little bit more diffuse, so it's going to be a little bit more white. Let's try it out. So I'm just going to switch my encoder to a first order ambisonic encoder. And if I press play... You can see that the pattern is much wider, and as you increase the order, the pattern just closes, closes, closes until the seventh order, which is right there in the in the center. Let me just change it back to seventh order. You can also see the visualization of the signal here, how it becomes more narrow the higher the order. And that is why using a higher order ambisonic signal is going to give you much more resolution when it comes to spatial awareness because the sounds are much more localized. And this is how the visualizer works in a nutshell. It doesn't matter what order you send to it, all is going to interpret this order. Now let's move to a more practical example. Right now we were working with a monophonic signal, which is a little bit boring. Um, let's do a, an ambisonics recording. What happens in real life situations? I have a recording here. And I'm going to be exploring how this recording looks um, in our visualizer. So first thing I'm going to do is I have an ambisonics recording and I'm going to send it to my seventh order ambisonics auxiliary track. Now, even though my auxiliary track is in seventh order ambisonics, it's going to be receiving a first order ambisonic signal. So you will see here that you only have four channels because it's a first order ambisonic signal. And finally, you will be able to see how this signal is being represented not only in the sound field graphically, but you will see the correlation, meaning that you will see where the weight of the signal is being predominant, and you will see how the energy is being distributed in each dimensional plane. Let's just grab a random position of this recording. You can see that the signal has a predominance on the front left, a little bit above the ear level in the visualizer, but not only that, you can also um, see how useful the correlation meter is because it's showing you where the um, acoustic weight of this signal is going towards, which is in the front left, a little bit above. So if I press play again and explore it one more time, Okay, so there are a couple of things here to notice as well. Um, you have the loudness meter, because an ambisonic signal doesn't have um, speakers, it is um, speaker agnostic. The loudness that you are seeing here has nothing to do with the speakers. This is the loudness of each dimensional pole before it is being decoded. So basically what you're seeing is the loudness of all your left side, of all your right side, of all your front, of all your back, of all your top and of all your bottom before it's being decoded. This is just like a guide. And there is this control that is going to allow you to um, see a little bit closer. It's like a zoom control so that you can see the loudness from a little bit closer. So 
So that is pretty useful. And finally, you have this slider here, which is going to help you filter the dynamic range of your visualizer so that you can see, you can focus on what really, really is um, loud and maybe ignore some uh, sounds that are a bit lower in volume. So it's gonna allow you to see the peaks a little bit more easy. So you can see that the higher it is, the more dynamic range it has. So you have much more information going on around you, but the lower it is, it's just narrowing down to the loudest parts. So you can very well see where the peaks of this sound are. Um, let me just put it from another place that has less volume. Another thing that you could see here is that when the volume goes down, you can see that the color of the visualizer changes. So our visualizer has an automatic loudness adaptation, which means that it will automatically adapt to the loudness of the signal. So the lower the volume of the signal, the greener it's going to be, and the loudest it goes, it's going to just become more yellow, more yellow than orange, and then red just to warn you about how loud it is and that the fact that it could peak. So if we were to raise the volume of this, you can see that it becomes red. So it is a very, very cool way to just keep track on how the loudness of your signal is behaving. And if I lower its volume extremely, you can see that it just becomes dark green, meaning that the loudness is very, very low. So like that, you can keep track of your signal. And finally, you can also flip each of the dimensional planes to display the energy where it's going. So if I press play again, and I just play with the flip button, you will see that the head will rotate to the opposite. So it is a very, very useful um, visualizer. And the other cool thing about it is that you can resize it. Like right now I have its default size, but you can just make it smaller if you want. And it was gonna automatically adapt to your size, or you can make it bigger if you want to have like a much clearer visualization. Maybe you are far away from your screen because you're setting up a microphone and you really want to see how you're setting up the microphone using the correlation meter, which is going to be my next example, which is super, super useful. So this is another of the examples that I wanted to show you in a real life recording, how you can visualize your ambisonics signal. So what happens when you want to record an ambisonic signal? How is this visualizer useful when you want to record? Let's explore that possibility. Um, right now here I have um, an ambisonics microphone and I have added track, which is going to be recording it. Um, in this track, as you can see, there's nothing I'm just gonna put it here. There's nothing, and if I were to arm it, let me just lower the volume. If I were to arm it, you will be able to hear the microphone. The first thing that I have inserted is just a transcoder, just to make sure that the signal goes from A format to B format. Nothing else, there's nothing else. The microphone is looking at me, or so I think, like it's right now looking at me. So I'm going to send this track to my Ambisonics auxiliary. And now my Ambisonics microphone is being routed to the visualizer and the visualizer is being routed to the decoder. So when I arm it, you can see that now if I speak right in front, the correlation is showing me that it is a little bit deviation. It's not um, in the front center, which means that if I were setting this microphone up, I will know that I have to rotate the microphone still a little bit just to grab the center exactly in the center. So I'm gonna do that. So now when I speak to it, you can see that it is right now in the front center, which means that the microphone is properly positioned. For example, if the source of my voice were a little bit lower, so for example, if I were here, you would be able to see in the correlation that the microphone is, is way too high, so you would be um, needing to lower its position. And the same happens if I go higher, 
If I go higher, you will see that the correlation is showing me that the sound is very high, so you have to lift the microphone a little bit. And this is the cool thing about this visualizer is that it is very, very useful to do that. When you're setting the microphone up, you can actually set to be the center right in the center. And it's a very cool guide to not just mess with the orientation of the microphone. So next, what I'm going to do is to upscale the signal to make the ambisonic signal higher order and to make the signal much more spatially clear. So I'm going to add an upscaler in my next insert. And I'm going to upscale my signal to seventh order ambisonics. So as you can see now, I'm getting here 64 channels of audio uh, because I have inserted my um, upscaler. And if I go again to the visualizer, you can see that the signal is right now being uh, concentrated in the front center because this is where I'm talking. And if I move a little bit, you will see that the signal also moves around. And so that means that this microphone being upscaled to seventh order ambisonics and then being visualized will allow you to see a very, very clear representation of where the sound is coming from, where the spatial correlation is going towards, its loudness and the energy distribution. So let's just say that I wanted to add an upscaler to the recorded signal that I had before. So let me just disarm this track and I'm going to go back to the signal that was pre-recorded and I'm going to add the upscaler there. Now with the upscaler here, when I press play, you will be able to see that the signal is being much more defined. So that's it. And if I bypass the upscaler and then enable it again, you will see that the visualizer will just go back to first order ambisonics where the signal is more diffuse to seventh order ambisonics where the signal is very concentrated. And what happens if I start distorting the shape of my sound field? What happens in the visualizer? Let's just try it. I'm just going to go back to my upscaler and I'm just going to start messing with the shape of the ambisonic signal. So I'm going to press play and I'm just going to be messing about with this. And so like that, you can see how the visualizer works and I could even rotate this signal. And you can see how whatever I do, the visualizer is always going to print a proper representation of the signal in the sound field is going to always give me a proper correlation uh, visualization, is going to always give me a proper energy distribution visualization, and is always going to give me a loudness um, visualization. Well, this is the visualizer. It's a very, very useful tool, and it is now available at Audio Brewers. We hope you enjoyed using it, and if you have any other further questions, don't hesitate to leave them below, and I will do my best to reply. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.